In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between a finance lease and an operating lease from the perspective of the lessee. So the main theoretical difference between a finance lease and an operating lease is that with a finance lease, we're saying that the lessor has effectively transferred control or ownership of the property to the lessee. And there's five tests that we use to determine whether it should be a finance lease or an operating lease. And I've made another video on that, so we're not going to talk about that here. Instead, I want to focus on the accounting differences. So if you had a lease, I want to show you how it would be different if you were to categorize it as finance relative to operating okay so with a finance lease you're gonna have two different expenses that are recognized you're gonna recognize interest expense and amortization expense separately with an operating lease you're just gonna have one expense it's gonna be called lease expense however that's a little misleading because this lease expense actually includes interest and amortization and in both cases we're going to make an effective interest table and we're going to be figuring what is the interest that is effectively accrued on the lease liability and so forth and we're going to be amortizing the right of use asset that is recognized in each case so in some ways the finance lease and operating lease are very similar right we're recognizing an asset we're amortizing that asset over time we're recognizing a lease liability we're recognizing interest on that lease liability However, there, there is that accounting difference of saying, well, we've got interest expense, amortization, and then just lumping it together with lease expense for operating. And the amounts can be different, right? So if you were to add the interest expense and amortization expense, so you get the total expenses associated with a, a lease for a finance lease in a given period, it's very likely to be different than the lease expense that you would have under an operating lease. And the reason is that lease expense un under an operating lease is typically going to be the same amount each year okay so you're basically you're recognizing interest and interest it gets lower and lower each year as the lease liability gets lower and lower because if you think about it, if you have less of a liability you're gonna have less interest accruing on that liability however the amortization is set up such a way it's like an accounting plug so that the lease expense is automatically the same each year and I'm gonna show you that with some journal entries and uh, and then with a finance lease Typically, the total expenses will be higher in the early years of the lease. And the reason is that the lease liability is higher in the early years. And so you're having higher interest, right? And then the amortization is just being done on a straight line basis. And so it's usually the same each year. So we're getting higher interest in the early years. And you add that to the amortization, the total expenses will also be higher in the early years. And then it'll be lower the later and later you get in the lease term. Let me show you, I'll, I'll show you the effective interest table, and which is exactly the same. I'm gonna give you an example here. And if you watch my videos on the finance lease and operating lease, you've already seen this fact pattern. It's the same one I use in those videos. I just wanna give you a quick rundown. Your company's gonna lease a truck for three years. The trucks expect to have a residual value of $15,000 at the end of the lease. Your company's gonna make lease payments, $20,000 at the beginning of each year. So that's gonna be an annuity due. We'll use the lessor's implicit interest rate of 6% to figure the present value of the residual value, the 15,000 is 12,594. But more importantly, the present value of the lease payments of that 20,000 a year for three years and starting the beginning of each year, that annuity due is 56,668. Add those two together, these two here, and we get 69,262 the fair value okay now the effective interest table we're going to take the present value of the lease payments and then we're going to have that that's going to be our our lease liability in the, be the beginning okay so that's going to be our lease liability now we have we recognize interest on a liability and then we have reductions in the liability each period now that is the same whether you're using the whether it's an operating lease or a finance lease but i want to show you how the journal entries will be different for each based on whether you classify it as as finance or if you classify it as operating and i've got the finance leases on the left there's all these journal entries on the left and then the operating leases on the right so you see that with each one whether it's finance or operating, we debit a right of use asset and credit lease liability in the beginning for the same amount, 56,668. So that doesn't change. In the very first day, we also make our first lease payment. So we reduce the lease liability by debiting it for 20,000. 
that's the same each way right so we don't we don't change that however on december 31st the the end the year end of the very first year this is where things are different remember the operating we just have one lease expense account but we have interest expense and amortization expense separately for the finance lease that's where things are different so the interest expense you'll see is twenty two hundred dollars uh, for so that's basically just the thirty six thousand six sixty eight times the lessor's uh, implicit interest rate of 0 0.06 that gives you twenty two hundred. So that twenty two hundred is interest expense and then increases the lease liability for the finance lease. However, with the operating lease, we still recognize that twenty two hundred. You see here we credit lease liability for twenty two hundred. Now we're paying twenty thousand in lease uh twenty thousand dollars for our lease payment so we debit lease expense for twenty thousand but then it's like pretend you don't know what the right of use asset is well we say well we've got credit a lease liability of twenty two hundred and a debit the lease expense of twenty thousand we need a plug we need a plug to make this balance so seventeen thousand eight hundred that's how much the right of use asset is amortized but notice we don't say amortization expense we don't say interest expense over here we just have lease expense so in a way it accounts for the interest just like we accounted for the interest with the finance lease but it just doesn't have its own separate interest expense and the right of use asset the amount that is amortized it's just a plug to make us get to this 20,000 lease expense because we're gonna have 20,000 lease expense every year for the operating lease okay now the finance lease we're going to have the same amortization expense each year okay we're just we're just dividing this 56 668 divided by three so we're going to have the same interest uh, amortization expense 18,889 however this credit to right of use asset for the operating lease is going to be different each time because it's a plug okay let me show you with the second uh, the second year and it'll make it a little easier to understand. Again, we reduce the lease liability in each case when we pay 20,000 to do the cash. That's not different, whether it's finance or operating lease. So let's go to the operating lease first over here. So again, now we've got that interest, which was 1,132. Okay, so we take that and that now we've got our lease liability here is increasing because of that interest. But we don't have interest expense over here we just debit lease expense and that accounts for the interest and the amortization now the lease expense again is twenty thousand it was twenty thousand before and it'll be twenty thousand next year we do twenty thousand every time for the operating method now right? it's the same lease expense and then we set this right of use asset to be the plug all it is if we say okay we got twenty thousand lease expense one thousand one thirty two lease liability to make this balance we have to amortize by eighteen thousand eight sixty eight however so so by the way so you notice that's different than what we had before before we had 17,800 now we have 18,868 for the operating lease method but the amortization for the finance lease is the same each time right it's 18,889 18,889 because we're just amortizing this asset straight line for the financing lease method okay so Again, we're going to have interest expense will be separately recognized, 1,132, and then we'll have the amortization expense separately recognized. Okay, and then when we get to the the final set of entries, again we make a $20,000 payment, so we've got $20,000, and that that's the same each way. Now we're going to have for the final for the operating method, and let, let me just make sure you can see here right and then the right hand side is the operating expense so that's over here so we've got or the operating lease method so we've got lease expense again of 20,000 it was 20,000 every time see it was 20,000 every time and then we just amortize we don't have any interest the final year because we made that payment on January 1st so between January 1st and December 31st we already paid off our lease so we're not going to accrue any interest on lease liability because we have no lease liability it, it went to zero okay so the, all we have is to finish amortizing the right of use asset so we just credit right of use asset and then we have the, the lease expense so again this is just a plug to make this balance now for we do the same amortization expense again this each time for the finance lease 18889 and again we don't have any interest expense because we paid off the lease liability on January 1st so that final year there is no lease liability to effectively accrue interest now if you're wondering hey how do how does the interest stack or how do the total expenses stack up for each one 
So if we were to take the total expenses, so we've got we've got five over here. We've got the, the amortization expense. We've got three three amortization expenses and then two interest expenses for the finance lease. Okay. Now, if you were to add those up, they add up, and let me change colors here. So they add up to fifty nine thousand nine ninety nine. Now, just due to rounding, it is basically sixty thousand dollars, which is the same. If you were to add up the lease expense, right? So our lease expense, we have tw three times we recognize twenty thousand dollars of lease expense. So it's sixty thousand dollars. It, it's just off due to rounding by this dollar, but basically you see that the total expenses that are recognized. If we disregard whether it's called uh, interest or amortization or lease, what whatever the expense, the total expenses end up being the same uh, in each case. However, if we were to go to each year or, or each each time period, so we say like right here, uh, the le the expense total expenses would be twenty one thousand. 89 if you were to add these two together and then now here we have twenty thousand twenty one dollars and then of course at the bottom we have eighteen thousand eighty nine because we just it's just this so and then we compare that to okay twenty thousand twenty thousand and twenty thousand we see that for the finance if we were to categorize this lease as a finance lease then the total expenses the very first year would be twenty one thousand eighty nine which would be one thousand eighty nine dollars higher than the operating lease uh, method and then it'd be twenty thousand twenty one dollars versus twenty thousand and year two so in year two finance would be a little bit higher just basically the same right they're just off by twenty one dollars and then in the third uh the third year then we see we have actually uh, uh less expense uh 18,889 under the finance method and then the expense is greater under the operating lease method so basically we're getting the same expenses we're just classifying them differently as interest and amortization and, and that it's a timing difference and that with the finance lease in the early periods uh, the the expense the total expenses are going to be higher than they would be uh, un under the operating lease method